We have a massive update in the form of Blender 4.3 with new geometry node features, grease pencil features, and bringing EV even closer to cycles. With that being said, let's dive in and cover it all in less than five minutes. Well, geometry nodes now supports grease pencil data. This is huge. I wish I had had this on my short film for when I was doing these rope animations. I ended up having to convert all these frame by frame into curves and using geometry nodes to turn into rope. Probably the best new feature, light and shadow linking in EV now matches cycles, allowing lights to affect specific objects and control which objects cast shadows provide providing greater artistic flexibility. Eevee now supports multi-pass compositing, enabling more detailed post-processing, and it also works in the viewport. This is a huge win for Eevee. Vulkan support now for rendering UI is available under Experimental. This will lower CPU overhead, reduce load on the GPU, and allow direct control over GPU memory allocation. Basically, it'll improve everything once fully implemented. New motion path line colors for frames before and after the current frame have been added. The new metallic BSDF node simplifies access to advanced metallic configurations, including the F82 tint approximation for easier color control, and the conductor Fresnel for IOR-based accuracy. We got a new texture node, which are the backbone of all procedural materials, so always excited to see function added here. The view transform now supports white balancing. Sculpt mode should be significantly faster with the new brush evaluation and viewport drawing optimizations implemented, which will also make it easier to add future updates. Brushes are now stored in shared asset libraries, making them faster to load and easier to use. And we have a built-in essentials library and they can now be accessed through the asset shelf in the 3D viewport. This applies to all brushes within Blender across all its tool sets. There are new brush thumbnails across all modes and all selected types. And in general sculpting, we have new brushes like Cree Sharp for fine details, Elastic Snake Coat for flexible shapes, Grab 2D, Grab Silhouette for precise 2D adjustments, and we have Trim for cleanage cuts. Under the painting brushes, we have expanded options for texture, vertex, sculpt painting with Erase Hard Soft and Paint Hard Soft for intensity control, plus the airbrush for smooth application and sharpen to define the edges. Under cloth sculpting, we have overhauled cloth brushes, including drag cloth, inflate cloth, and expand contract cloth for realistic fabric manipulation, plus pinch folds and grab random cloth for organic wrinkled effects and overall better cloth sculpting. On top of all these new brushes, the brushes that we have existing were also tweaked based on user feedback to better serve. And we also have a new masking tool, the mask from boundary operator, which was added to adjust mask values based on mesh or face set islands, adding flexibility in masking. Some people are calling this Grease Pencil 3.0 as it's seen such an extreme overhaul with so many features, you may need to actually migrate your old projects, which they have a process here but they've rewritten Grease Pencil to be completely better for performance and to remove some limitations. They've added new layer groups, which allow easy visibility locking and onion sketching management for group players with color tagging for organization. We have the brush assets, which carries across all of Blender, but here we can use it within the geometry nodes drawing kit. And then we have the draw tool enhancements, which include customizable radius units, improved spacing, new active smoothing algorithm, and this all enhances drawing accuracy. We have a new enhanced eraser tool, which now cuts strokes by calculating intersection, enabling precise erasing, and with multiple transparency levels when using the soft eraser. A new tool to edit fill gradients called the fill gradient tool has been added, allowing customization in edit mode, making it easier to apply gradient fills to your objects. We can now pack bakes into our simulation nodes. This makes it easier to share projects utilizing simulation nodes. For example, like my dynamic VFX pack, which has stylized effects, great for anime, visual effects, and more, and it's really designed to do complex effects with ease and help you save time on your projects. But back to geometry nodes. We now can add gizmos within the nodes, and we also have new warning nodes that we can use to add custom warnings. And then we got new utility nodes in the form of hash value, integer math, matrix determinant nodes, and the value to string nodes. Action selectors are now available for multiple data blocks in the properties editor, allowing easier access to actions for various elements. This is one step towards a new and improved NLA and action system, which will drastically speed up animation. When inserting keys, all other keys are now deselected and leaving only the new keys selected. Properties where a bone can be chosen now have an eyedropper button that allows you to pick bones from a 3D viewport or the outliner. A white point conversion node has been added to the color balance node. A new global save as render option is available in the file output node. ID renaming now allows enforcing a chosen name even when it conflicts with another data block. Blender now uses open source RT libraries for hardware accelerated ray tracing on both Linux and Windows improving performance. And the volume scattering node now supports additional phase functions enhancing scattering effects for diverse environments. A new diffuse roughness input has been added to the principal BSDF. Support for AMD and Intel GPUs on the metal backend and support for Vega GPUs in the AMD HIP backend for cycles have been removed. They explain why in the commit notes. The panoramic camera now includes central cylindrical projection as a new mapping option. 
A toggle has been added for fast GI approximation, similar to cycles. We got the for each element zone, which is a new zone that evaluates nodes for each geometry element and joins outputs into new geometries. A new unwrapping method called minimum stretch reduces distortion by refining results through iterative adjustments when unwrapping automatically. The video sequence editor also saw some performance improvements and new options to connect and various timeline improvements, making it easier to move, adjust, and edit clips of both sound and video. If you love all the amazing thing that they're doing over at the Blender Foundation, I definitely recommend that you check out donating to the Blender Dev Fund.